Hi everyone. Uh, my apologies. This morning is very busy with outside um, meetings that I totally had not put on my, my business calendar and they were sitting on my personal calendar, did not graph around. And so now we are in a midday report. You might be saying, oh my gosh, yeah, what's that going to do to help me? But it actually has been superb. And I want to show you what's going on. We'll start with SPY. Remember, one of the things we were talking about are the 8 to 9 a.m. candlestick Eastern time in the SPY and the Qs. And we're going to look at the traversing of range when we've got this motion so far away from um, our price action. And so the big thing for us to have a peek at is the following. Notice what happens here. 8 to 9 o'clock. It breaches, can't hold. Breaches, can't hold. That's the 10 o'clock candlestick. Breaches, can't hold sideways motion so it tells us naturally that if we can't stay above this 8 a.m candlestick that we're very likely to traverse the range and so the short action it was a buy the dip formation for sure but the short action told us where to start looking for prices to go long so have a look notice you don't put a limit order out here Instead, you say, all right, let me see it fade. Notice where it goes to. It goes to yesterday's base of its 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. candlestick. Absolutely incredible. It actually loses that area, and as soon as it recovers it, it gives us a chance to take this long action potentially into the gap. So the gap is... Uh, filled here from the overnight at 563. And if we have that short iron condor still in the books, it is absolutely looking fantastic. It might have freaked you out in the morning, but remember, you give these a little bit of time to ease themselves out and you don't jump the gun. So what we're looking at in terms of which lines we're drawing supremely important. We're not looking potentially at, okay, here's where support is, here's where resistance is. We're measuring the time of day that we see price action begin to tell us what directional flow might look like. And as soon as we are either above our moving averages, below our moving averages, whatever it is, we take that particular trend. Now, my thought is, that we've just run too hot into this space and we could sell off. But where is the primary motion that so many traders stare down? It's the VWAP. And so the long action should push us right up into this. I'm going to use this line. Relative resistance. So if we're long here, we want to take a little bit of profit and then we want to... Uh, raise our stop and we're in good shape. All right, so fantastic motion, just absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, this afternoon, we're still in a bounce formation, right? This is an hourly formation, so dips are buy zones based on trend. And so we look for these areas where we see, we know that traders position themselves from a daily perspective try to move where they want to. Okay. All right. That's it. So that's what we're looking at. Let's look at the cues. Cues are quite a bit more sideways. Here is, let's see, this is the 8 a.m. candlestick. For, oh, that's the 9 a.m. candlestick. Excuse me. This is the 8 a.m. candlestick from yesterday. I'm going to move it up here right okay today's 8 a.m candlestick right in the middle of all of that noise but it's still a place that the traders battle they battle long they battle short let me remove this one because i really want to clone this is that eight nine that's eight and then eight oops sorry all right so what we are looking at are these excellent ranges that when they break, 
the price action sends us into the prior days of motion. Value area low combined with yesterday's VWAP. Absolutely fantastic trading. Here it is bouncing up into the range. There's that 8 a.m. So it should get into 475-ish or so and then get very noisy into the afternoon. I would say we want to be extremely careful trading tomorrow, but we can see that these levels are holding absolutely fantastically. I mean, just incredible, incredible. I'm just so pleased. So very, very pleased. This one, eight. Yep. So here we are bouncing. There's the top of a one hour range from three days ago, 473, 474. Trend is up, but we're significantly under it. So as we get up into these edges, it's a place to take profit. If you're saying to yourself, wow, okay, I did buy the dip. How can I manage that profit space? You move into the tiny time frames and you watch. Are my higher lows holding? Yes. Where was the last place I saw resistance? Right up here at 474. I'm going to take some profit into that zone. And if I bought properly down here at the 472, I can have a little bit of risk. Price action can potentially hold and then move up into the upside. All right, let's take a look at the ES into the afternoon. I am still using the forward contract. Tomorrow, I believe, is the um, space that it's going to eventually roll over. But have a look. Let's take a look at these hourlies. All right, here, remember, we do the opening range trade, and that is from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Notice, breaks right out over it. Tells us there's buying pressure there. And so as we do it, let's see what kind of, I'll do Fibonacci because it's easy. Let's see what kind of Fibonacci event we get here. Okay, it goes into the four, looks like about five, right? Let me uh, edit this and see if five is the number to watch. It moved up to the five, but as long as you're sitting with your moving averages, folks, if you're above the average, the pullback spy zone, hourly chart, trade with the flow of data rather than anything else. Okay, here we are coming back to the top of the opening range. So what should we be doing here? Well, if we're staring this down, we should be taking profit. But remember, we've got a two way tape bullish formations a little bit sideways so yes this is resistance they are going to try and do something about it but at the end of the day because it's a bullish pullback we could get right back up there into 5712 absolutely right back up there into 5712 this number i actually drew yesterday you can look at yesterday's charts and see that that is absolutely working here as you come into this hourly formation it is saying to you hey look out i've got a potential selling event here but if it holds i'm going to continue to rise to the north so what do you do you take profit and you make sure on your tight time frames it gives you structure to trade structure and so you can see oh my goodness i'm moving up here Maybe this is a short action event. I can take that short right here at 51, 5701, but because I have these higher lows, my price action event might be a little bit tight, right? Because we're coming into these known zones in times past. Old resistance may easily be new support or we could head downward, but you can see if you take a bottoming formation because you came into one of those levels and you said, I'm doing it, you've got to take profit at the top of the level because they are sitting there. Absolutely. Please remember yesterday's 15, uh, 5695, 5696 zone. A lot of buyers came into that zone and tried to hold. If they cannot hold this zone, we could head right back down here and even lower. Very sideways market, extremely choppy formations. Be quick, wait for the formations to tell you what's going on, but also be quick to take profit because we've got a two-way tape. Let's take a look at the NQ. Remember, the NQ is the only contract we look at where we add the midnight range. Have a, have a gander at this, all right? Let's go to the hourly. 
I found this to be so beautiful. Have a peek. Here is, here is the midnight candlestick, right? From here to here. Look at it explode to the upside. Listen, when it's doing this and you've got trend, your pullbacks are buy zones. Pullbacks are buy zones. Pullbacks are buy zones. Pullbacks are buy zones. Until you start having topping formations. And I would look to the left to see that. I would say, okay, this is a great profit zone for me. I am going to take some gains. Look at what happened. It moved up above, but also collapsed. And so the theory says we're going to visit that midnight candlestick formation again and have a look. Who would have thought that we would move 160 points right down past it? Notice where we stop. Value area low. But it's also, hang on a second. Yeah, I don't need that. Um, where did I see that? Nope. Must be on another chart. But we also see once it loses it, heads to value area low, all of a sudden the buyers start coming in. So if you look at that, you go, all right, it should go back here. I am not making any hires, higher highs and holding. So I've got a sideways tape because I can stare it down and see I just came up from there. And now we're looking at a space where we go, oh, here it is losing the area. Once it comes back into that zone, you can trade it. Where do you want to trade it? Into the top of that midnight candlestick. You can also use that opening range. And so notice how many days have an opening range here. Here's the opening range candlestick. Look, to the tick, to the tick. These things are absolutely incredible. I've got to, I've got to figure out uh, some other things that we can do on a bigger framework and a bigger scale that says, hey, have a peek, this is what we're after. But those two zones are phenomenal. Look, walk right up into the six o'clock to seven o'clock Eastern time candlestick formation. What does that tell us? It tells us it's a place to take some profit. Doesn't mean that we won't ride back up because this is a two-way tape. But what it is telling us is once I bottom out here, Start looking, I'm holding this ledge, value area low, bounced off of it to the tick. Notice yesterday it filled the gap. And so now that it's filled the gap, that higher low is telling us, you know, easily we could get back into some of these other candlestick formations. All right, YM. This one, a little bit harder, but same kinds of things we can stare down, right? So 8 a.m. candlestick, if we use the same things that the traders um, that, that trade the ES and, uh, excuse me, that trade the SPY, use this 8 a.m. candlestick formation, maybe we've got ourselves a price action event we can stare down, right? So that's 8 a.m. from two days ago. This is the 8 a.m. candlestick, oops, 8 a.m. candlestick today barely, I love that these clutter. I know you're thinking to yourself, gosh, that's getting so noisy, but it's a good thing that they're noisy because it tells you there's converging behavior at these lines in the sand, right? So there is our 8 a.m. candlestick, gets above it, expands, can't hold, gets above it, expands, can't hold, gets above it, expands, can't hold. That's a clear signal of holy cow, I'm going to be stepping down into these other candlesticks on the way, these other price action candlesticks on the way down. Where did it stop? Just under the 8 a.m. candlestick of two days ago. And now it's bouncing into today's opening range and it's collapsing. All right. What are we likely to see? I think chop in the next little bit. I think that's entirely what we could see as the afternoon plays on, but because it's rejecting this so nicely, maybe it's not a bad shot to go short back into the value area low, okay? Cross current, great midday recap in terms of saying, holy cow, look at how these lines hold. They are holding absolutely beautifully. You don't expect them to hold to the tick. Once they recover, 
you know what they're doing is traversing because so much of this movement is algorithmic. All right, everybody. Sorry about that late stay. Had tons going on. We have a, we always have a lot to do before we leave the country. And this is just one of those times. All right. I'll see you on the platforms.